Garden of the Salish Sea Curriculum is the Whatcom County affiliate of the nonprofit Pacific Shellfish Institute, which is based in Olympia. We have worked to support students and teachers since 2012 with a shellfish-based K-12 curriculum aligned with the Next Generation Science Standards. Hi everyone, today we are at Birch Bay State Park to give you a virtual field trip. Let's take a moment to recognize where we are. The Coast Salish peoples have a saying, when the tide is out, the table is set. The Coast Salish people rely on the natural resources of the Salish Sea and have been stewards of this land and the traditional and customary fishing grounds for thousands of years, and they continue to rely on these resources today. Both Birch Bay State Park and Drayton Harbor are important Whatcom County shellfish protection districts with recreational and commercial shellfish resources. Here are some tips for how you can be a good steward while exploring the intertidal zone. For more details on these tips, visit our Family Beach Exploration Guide. One of the most exciting things that we do when we're here at Birch Bay State Park with our students is a clam survey. A survey is where you find out more information about something. And so today we're gonna to try to learn more about the types and numbers of clams that are here at Birch Bay State Park. One of the really important reasons why we do clam surveys is to keep making sure that our clam populations are healthy. That's why there's actually limits to the number and sizes of clams that you can collect if you have a, a shellfish permit. One of the really important thing is to check Department of Health before you go clamming. There could be shellfish closures due to um, toxins in the water or other pollution sources. So make sure that you have your license and check the Department of Health to make sure that clamming is open. When we do a full clam survey, we actually do multiple transects. And it goes from the shoreline all the way out to the bay. And we do this in a way that each is spread out about 10 feet apart. So we're really able to see the profile because certain types of clams live closer to the shore and other types are down further out. Today we're gonna to go do two example holes. This first one's gonna be up closer to the shore and then we'll do another hole further down to see what kind of different clams we find in these different habitats. Every time we dig a hole, we make it one cubic foot. To do this, we use a hose to make sure our holes are all the same size. This helps us compare, because if one person dug a really big hole and found a whole lot of clams, and someone else dug a smaller hole and only found a couple of clams, this wouldn't really tell us about how many clams are on the beach. It would really tell us more about the hole size. So keeping a consistent hole size helps us compare from one location to another and from year to year. So now that I've dug my one cubic foot hole, I'm going to sift through this mud and try to sort out some of the different types of clams. So in this hole, we found three types of clams. You can see that some of them have different patterns. We actually, in these species that we have here, we actually don't use the color to tell the different types of clam apart. We use the shape, the pattern, and the texture. And so you can see that this really tiny one we'll talk about first. I'm going to rinse it off so it's easier to see. So this first type of clam, this is a super tiny cockle. And we can find you a bigger example that I'll show you as well. It's also known as a heart-shaped cockle, but this is a really tiny one. This is an example of a bigger one that I can show you to kind of show you the patterns more clearly. The easiest way to tell the cockle is that it has these big, thick ribs. Just like your ribs inside your body keep your um, body nice and strong and your internal organs uh, protected, they have these big thick ribs that make their shells hard um, to open and keeps them protected inside. So we have this one cockle and obviously this is our hole or our size gauge um, to be able to tell if it's a harvestable clam. 
obviously this clam is too small to keep. So these clams are called little neck clams. The way that we can tell our little necks apart is that they have a checkerboard pattern. They have both ribs that go this way and rings that go around the clam. We have two types of little necks. This one you can tell is a little bit more oval shape. That's our native little neck. This one's more rounded, which is the manila little neck. The difference between the manila and the native little neck. So total for hole number one, we found five clams, all of which were not harvestable size. Now we're gonna dig a hole further out into the intertidal zone. Now we have dug our one cubic foot hole and so I'm gonna sift through this mud and find the different types of clams that are inside. We found two more heart-shaped cockles in this hole. You can see those really defined ribs that help identify them. One of these two is large enough to harvest, the other is not. The next type of clam that we found in our hole is a macoma. We can identify the macomas because they have a pointed end. If you picture half of the clam looks like a triangle and the other half looks more like an oval. We found 12 different macomas in this hole, all of which are too small to harvest. Next type of clam that we found is a butter clam. These clams have thick oval shells that have really fine rings that go around the shell. They're normally chalky white, except when they become stained black with ferrous sulfite, which is what happens when there's not a lot of oxygen in the mud. There were four butter clams in this hole, all of which were large enough to harvest. In the lower intertidal hole, we found 18 clams, five of which were large and 13 of which were not large enough to harvest. In general, the closer to the shore at Birch Bay State Park, we find little necks and manila clams. And at lower tides and elevation, we have butter clams, cockles, and horse clams. Visit our website at gardensalishsea.org for more virtual beach walks, family activities throughout the summer and fall, and sign up for our newsletter. You can also take the Salish Sea Challenge, which has ideas for keeping our watershed healthy.